this rather snappy, won't you? I have some very heavy thinking to do before 10 o'clock. Hey, welcome to another episode of Get It Right Texoma with the trio, Mike Hendron, and Terry McAdams, and Trey Sorella. Glad to have you back here. It's brought to you in part by MacTech Solutions, 4020 Ray Road, Suite 3B Finishing Touch Plaza in Wichita Falls, Texas. Get them online at MacTech-Solutions.com. Eddie mm-hmm. Hills Fun Cycles at 401 North Scott, downtown Wichita Falls since 1966, one of Wichita Falls' oldest and most beloved businesses. Well, yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, they are. EddieHillsFunCycles.com. And also by me, Mike Hendren, real estate agent, Wichita Falls, Texas, and uh, you can find me at Anchored Realty here in Wichita Falls, where you locate me. And you can uh, get me online on Facebook. Uh, just look for Mike Hendren Realtor. Or, you know, you can give me a call, 940-232-3876. If you want to talk, you want to chat it up, talk about trying to buy a new home anywhere in North Texas, I'm your guy. Give me a call. So welcome to the podcast. we got a lot to talk about. We've got a few things happening around Zadia to discuss. Yes. Uh, downtown Wichita Falls Development Cajun Fest, Cajun. back for its 16th year. Did you say that properly, by the way? Cajun, Cajun. Cajun Fest. Cajun Fest. <laughs> Is uh, going to happen April the 20th, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., 901 9 Street, downtown Wichita Falls. It's always a big party. Oh, it's a big one, yeah. Uh, hopefully the weather is perfect for this. I think by that time, all the cold will, thank you, Lord, be gone. And uh, we'll actually have some decent weather Yeah, moving in. And again, that's going to be April the 20th, 11 to 7, downtown Wichita Falls, Cajun Fest. And then uh, coming up on May the 4th, that's on a Saturday, at Eddie Hills Fun Cycles at 401 North Scott. It is a Kasi Chili event. Uh Kasi, C A S I, the Chile Appreciation Society International. International. That's right. Yeah, th- this is the this is a big this is a big chili event. It is. If, if all the chili cooks that are uh, that are trying to go to Terlingua to qualify for the the World Championship, that's right. Uh, they have to go to these Kasi events, Kasi sponsored events, and qualify and get points. And we actually are a real Kasi sponsored event. So all of the proceeds are going to go to help benefit pets. Um, which is a spay and neuter service, and I think they do full full scale veterinary services, they low do. cost veterinary they services do. for your pets. Uh, so anyhow, pets for your pets. But anyhow, so that's going to happen yeah. there. We're going to have a lot of uh, we're going to have a lot of things going on. I, yeah. I'm still working on all of the details, but but get signed up if you are a Cosi Chili Cook, yeah, and you want to get involved. Be sure to get signed up today and get set up for our uh, our event. It's going to be a, a nice event. You can cook indoors or outdoors. That, that's one thing that we do that that uh, is a benefit to people because it's probably going to be pretty good weather, but you never know if you got have storms to come in. That's true. And so if not, if uh, storms come in, we can actually have people come inside and cook indoors. Yeah. Because when they're cooking, they don't cook these massive pots of chili. They cook a small pot of chili on a cold, <laughs> basically a Coleman stove. Yeah. Right, so they can do right, it inside or out. Right. And uh, it's always a lot of fun. I, Terry and I will get to be judges. Absolutely. And, and um, you know, get to sample some of the best chili. The worst chili I ever had there was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no bad chili at a it's hard. It's hard to score because everybody brings their A game. Yes. Every yes. single one of these cooks is bringing their A game, and they do such a good job. And it's it's hard to, oh, you know, how, how do you how do you score one lower than the other? Well, that's why they tell you to score it on its own merit. Yeah. They tell you don't compare them. I know. When, when, I know. when you, when like, you uh, are sworn in as a judge. They do say, don't compare them. Just do one through ten on this chili, one through ten on this chili, one through yeah. ten on this chili, or whatever it is yeah. in the certain areas, and then they'll tally it up. Man, yeah. awesome. not like the Olympics and uh, the ice skating or the gymnastics or whatever. Yeah. I think they they say they compare against yeah. each other, and you know, hold so. up a little sign with a yeah. number on it. Yeah. <laughs> so if, but. Oh, anyway, all right. Well, that's what's happening here in the local area coming up. We got a couple of big stories to talk about. Uh, I guess we'll start here. Um, U.S. protection of our European allies and their spend on defense. Trey? Yeah, this is kind of one of those deals. This is something that sticks in my craw at times. Um, I have, and, and to be fair, I'm married to an English woman. Uh, she's an American now, but she was born and raised in England. Mm-hmm. So I have family that lives in England. And I get a little tired of our allies, especially the Europeans. First of all, I get tired of Americans running running us down. 
I, yeah. Look, we have problems. I, I have no problem with that. Sure. I understand that you have a right to yeah. say what you want to say, but I'm tired of everybody comparing us to how great Finland is or how great England is yeah. or how great whatever. Because yeah. first off, you don't live there. No. Nope. All you know is some bullshit survey yeah. that you read online right. that the happiest place to live is here and the happiest place to live is there. Yeah, whatever. But, and I really get tired of foreign people running America down. Because it's kind of one of, especially foreign people that live under the umbrella of the protection of the United States of America. Yep. As far as I'm concerned, you can just shut the fuck up and say thank you for for the protection. Because your your country would not be as happy and as prosperous as it would be if you did not have the overarching protection of the United States military. I, I go back to World War II. If the United States had not entered the war, if we had not if we had not entered that war, the world would look like a very, very different place Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Yeah. We, I, I, you can, you can cuss or discuss or whatever you want to. I don't care. We changed the course of that war. We changed the course of the, or the history of the world. The history of the world, yes. really. I mean, we really did. The United States entry into the war, because we, we were not, Europe was already in War. Oh, yeah. Well, the, Germany had basically taken over a good part of Europe. I mean, England was about right. to fall. It was only after the uh, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor that we finally entered the war. and and Officially entered uh, it. We uh, had some people over there. We, we did, but we, but we officially started committing massive amounts of numbers of troops and armor and hardware and everything else, and then we started throwing our entire economic might into the war effort. You know, we, we rationed certain materials, iron, steel, copper, aluminum. Food. People in Food. America, people yeah. in America s- sacrificed as well. Yeah. I'm not saying the sacrifice in America was as great as the sacrifice in Europe, obviously, because we weren't fighting on our home soil. Right. But, right. but, but, I, but there, were, there were sacrifices made. So we, our entering that war changed, the, it turned the tide for the whole world. Um, so I do, you know, when I, especially when I hear about, uh, you know, the United Nations de- making demands about this, that, or the other. You know what? Shut up. We, we don't owe anybody. Seriously, we don't owe you. We don't owe you anything, okay? And, and it, it's high time that certain individuals and certain nations in the world start paying their own daggum bills. Well, and and here, here, I got numbers to back myself up here, okay. by the way. I didn't uh-huh. just come, you know, I, I come prepared. You when I, when I make data. a statement, when I can make a statement, I try to come with data if it's a, yeah. not an opinion statement. All right. And I don't know that this is a, this is necessary opinion because I don't know about you guys, but don't you guys feel slighted sometimes? Sure. When you when you hear about how uh, the Netherlands is is the place to live and everything is yeah. it, it, that's well, fine, but and and it may be in a lot of ways. But the fact is, if they didn't have the protection of the United States of America, they wouldn't be the place to live. They would have to spend more money on defense. They get to spend their money on more. all kinds of other things. For instance, for in America. We are number one in the in the world as far as spending in defense by far. Nowhere close. Yeah. Even China's new number two is is way behind. Right. We spend eight hundred and seventy seven billion dollars a year in defense. Yeah. In the United States. Yeah. We account for thirty nine percent of the world spend <coughs> in, in defense. Is in the United States. Our next closest ally in Europe is the UK, England, and they're right. a small country, <laughs> and, and they spend sixty eight. <laughs> Point five billion. So there's between sixty eight point five to eight hundred and seventy seven billion. Right. They we spend thirty nine percent. We we account for thirty nine percent of the world's defense. They could account for three point one percent of the world's defense. Wow. Okay. Germany's next at fifty five billion. Then France at fifty three. Italy at thirty three. It goes all the way down to Romania. I have a list of uh, all these countries, and this is the top forty. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's us and our 14 European allies that are in the top 40. We spend more, we spend more than twice, no, more than three times the amount of money they spend. And when it comes to the percentage of the world, yeah. we spend more than three times the percentage of the world. Yeah. And so what people don't understand is yes, you can sit there and say, yeah, oh, we have this and we have this service and this service and that service. That's fine because you're not spending all the money you would have to on defense because there are bad people in the world. And if the United States was not here to keep Russia and China and those people in check with our defensive spending, Mm -hmm. Great Britain would not be able to get away with $68.5 billion in spending if the United States said, we're going to be isolationists. 
And uh, if Great Britain wanted to keep Russia off their doorstep, they would have to step it up to $120 billion or whatever the number is. There's a certain mm-hmm. number they'd have to spend. Yeah, yeah. So everybody, everybody gets to live their best life or whatever you want to say, but yeah. understanding that the United States is, is – we're watching your back. That's right. That's right. And so at, at some point – I think that these these nations, these European nations, and our allies and things need to acknowledge that. Well, but then you look at you look at at our own situation here at home with our southern border, wide open. We've got literally we have literally thousands upon thousands of people entering our country every day, many of whom are not coming from Mexico. They're not Mexicans. They're not even from Central America or even South America. They're coming from the other side of the world. They're, they're being flown into um, somewhere in South or Central America and then making their way uh, into Mexico and then being smuggled into to our border. And, and I still, no one is asking the question, who is financing the trip for these people? Well, there's a lot of people asking the question, but nobody's getting any answer. Nobody's getting any answer. Well, but I don't hear anybody in the media pressing this issue. I do not hear anybody. And, and if, if somebody is out there... And you want to? You, you may on the national you know, scale. I yeah, agree with you. Yeah. You know, let me know, but I don't hear anybody on a national scale pushing this question and and demanding answers. These people are not stowaways on a boat or a plane. They're not sneaking their way into in, into uh, into the uh, into this hemisphere. They're being flown over here to this side of the world. And then they are being smuggled to the to the southern border with the United States, and then walking in, and they're showing up in clean clothes, well fed, and looking very healthy. And most okay. of them, by the way, younger men, military well, military age men. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, guys in their late teens to early thirties or late thirties. Yep, yep, military age, okay. and and it makes you wonder what in the hell is going on here, and what's being planned or plotted around us, and behind our backs. This has got this has got to stop. We have got to get our before we can even really start to have a serious substantive discussion about deportations and how that's going to work. You got to stop the flow. We've got to get the border sealed. We've got to get the border physically, logistically under control. Once you do that, then you can really get serious about deporting people who are in the country right. illegally. Right now, we've got we got something worse than a revolving door going on here. And here's the thing. It's not revolving at all because they're not going out. There's no door. Yeah, there's they're, no they're door. They're just coming in. It's a one-way valve. Yeah, they've taken the door completely out now. Yeah. This is the thing. If, if you've got – if a 1,000 people cross that border in a single day, and it's, it's very much more than that. So if you've got a 1,000 people, if one or two even of those people are coming here with nefarious means in mind, they're terrorists, they're criminals, whatever – you know, they, they've, been, they've been charged with murder or rape or something else in another country. But they're coming into this country with nefarious intentions. That's one or two too damn many, y'all. Well, we already have our own criminals. Yes. Yeah, we more don't need extras. We don't more, need extras. More than enough of our own to deal well, with. Our prisons are busting at the seams with people yeah, that have, I, have committed heinous crimes. Yeah, it's, well, it's I think nuts. it's treasonous that we're not enforcing the existing uh, laws. That's a great word. That's a great that word. That is treasonous. Right. Yes. I, I just I don't know how else you you look at it by to- right. I, and even if it, allowing them to come in is one thing, but to not following to not follow the existing law, right, right. When it's not a, allowing it to happen, right. It, it's it, and you just it, so I don't know. That's what dri- yeah. drives me nuts. And yeah. and I guess there's uh, been some news stories that I was looking into this a little bit last week that um, there's su- supposedly. Um, uh, Barack Obama actually uh, deported many more people than even uh, Trump did. Yeah, and yeah. and then, um, but then uh, they're saying, "Oh, but but Biden has done more executive actions on it." Well, I don't get the quantity of ex- well, what were they? Yeah, he did. You know, he did more because he reversed them. Right. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 so like, just because. They're, 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 well, once again, that's 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 the bullshit of lies yeah, because they can say a, Biden has performed more executive actions than um, anybody. It, when it comes to the border, that's true because yeah. all he did was reverse everything that was already working. Yeah. Right, but details matter. Yeah, the exactly. actual yeah. what sure do do. is in each one of these yes. executive actions, well, supposedly. That's, that's why this is such a big lie. That that, and you hear the the pundits talking about the especially on the left this bipartisan 
border bill and Congress isn't doing their job and there's nothing that Joe Biden can do. No. Well, Joe Biden undid a whole bunch of things that Donald Trump had in place. Mm. Why can't he just re- redo what he what he undid? Yeah. And that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, look, well. I get that a lot of people don't like Donald Trump. I'm not a huge fan, okay, no. to be honest with you, but I was a fan of his policies. Yeah. The fact is some of the policies worked, and some of them were, were the right thing for us to have. And Joe Biden came in, and their whole their whole mantra was, we're going to undo everything no matter what. They didn't means wow. test things. Yeah. They didn't evaluate things. Nope. All they did was just undo things. It's, and and that's a problem. Yeah, if it's got the Trump's name on it at all, they yeah, want to undo it. That's it. That, well, or which, more, which is a know, which is a childish, yeah. by the way, a childish well, way to govern. They're more interested in pandering to their to their uh, to yeah. certain areas of their base or their political base. I am sick and tired of our nation's security and our nation's future being used as a political football. Yeah. I want people who are serious about protecting us as a nation and ensuring our sovereignty as an independent representative republic, because that's what we are. It's actually the number one goal of a country, in my Mm -hmm. opinion, is to protect the sovereignty. It's it's not to create this and create that. Because if you can't do that, Right. Nothing else matters. Right, because you don't net, have a country. Yeah, right. exactly. You yeah. know, you got to defend no. defense is as part of that, it's defending your so- sovereignty and keeping out people who are um, not friendly to our. I mean, that is, and, and that's where these people are coming in. And so you have to manage the process. You can't just let them come in mil- nilly willy. Well, you know? and this and this dovetails into the other day. I don't know if you guys saw. I'm sure you guys saw the uh, the footage of the Texas National Guard trying to hold the line down there. Mm. And uh, a bunch of these illegal aliens ripped down a fence mm-hmm. and actually overran the Texas National Guard. This is insane. Who, by the way, who Insurrection. Has, yeah. Who, <laughs> no, who, I, don't, well, I guess that's not. My, my question is, though, over. Who, who has the right for uh, rules of engagement to set rules of engagement for the Texas National Guard? Is it is it Abbott? Who is it? Because the fact is, if you're a young man with a, standing there with an M16, and, yes, I don't want you just to start willy-nilly shooting people, but if people start fighting you, oh, what, yeah. are you what are you supposed to do? Especially especially when there's a bunch of them, you could simply say, if, if look, if you're standing with an M16 and one person comes at you, they're, and they're not unarmed, and it's one-on-one, no, you shouldn't shoot that person. You should be trained to help to, to, to physical combat to be able to subdue that person. You should be trained, especially if there's multiples. But if there's five of you standing there and there's 100 people, I don't care who you are. Bruce Lee, all, all the movies that you saw where, where Bruce Lee whooped five guys, he didn't whoop five guys at one time. When when there's five people standing there and there's 100 people and they're coming at you, in my my eyes, you're 100% justified to open fire. Because yep. first off, it's going to do, it's, it's going to stop that that flow because they're going people are going to disperse. And b- because that's an overwhelming odd. You can't, I don't care how tough you are, yeah. you cannot fist fight 100 people. Five guys can't take on 100 and win. You just can't do it. You know. Well, well. You, again, uh, the Alamo. You know, you had 185, roughly 185 defenders up against uh, a Mexican army of somewhere between 3,500 and 5,000. And those guys fought to the death. The, the song says 5,000, uh, even though I know yeah, it's probably wrong. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was they, they, were, 5, they were vastly outnumbered. Yes. The, the Texas defenders were vastly outnumbered. And they fought to the death, even knowing, even knowing, going into that into that situation, that if they were unsuccessful in repelling the Mexican forces, that they were going to be they were going to be put, put to the sword. They were going to be put to death. Uh, Santa Ana had already made it clear there would be no quarter given. That, you know, anybody that's captured will be put to death, and they were. And so there, there's a, there's a fighting spirit. There's a there's a spirit of defense in this state. We are. I think we are are brought up to understand that you defend your position. You do not let yourself be overrun. You do not let yourself. You don't. You don't surrender. And and this, I think, this is what angers Washington more than anything is that Texas is refusing to surrender. We're refusing to surrender to the will of Washington D.C. and we are refusing to, to surrender to what is happening on this southern border, this invasion that's taking place. But, but my, my, and I agree with you, but one of my, my biggest problems is if we're hamstringing these kids, we're, we're, we're putting our Texas National Guard, our troops, mm-hmm. our mil- these are military troops, by the way, yeah. we're putting them out there, 
and arming them to the teeth and then telling them you can't do anything to, to protect yourself, yeah. that's bullshit. Well, now, now you're putting them at risk. Yeah, you're, absolutely. You're putting them at great Are we going to wait till one of them gets killed yeah. or overrun, but then we're going to start, start yeah. doing this? No, it's standard rules of engagement. Right. If you're in a combat zone, you should be allowed to, and that is a, that is a combat zone at this point. You can call whatever you want. But, and, and by the way, we've officially declared, or uh, Greg Abbott, Abbott has defi- officially declared this as an invasion, so that turns it into a combat zone during mm-hmm. that time. Okay, why, are, why can we these uh, troops not protect themselves? Yep. It's wrong. Yep. Putting them right there and say, here you go, stand here with a gun. Now, you can't do anything about it. You can't protect yourself. That's bull. Changing gears here a little bit. Uh, Chucky Schumer talking about the Israeli government. Yeah. Uh, Schumer... You know, open mouth, insert foot kind of thing, as he, usual. He did. He did. And, and I disagree with what Chuck Schumer said. Chuck Schumer basically said there needs to be a change in government in Israel. I disagree with it. But I will defend Chuck Schumer saying it because we're contributing money to Israel. Mm-hmm. And I go back to the same thing. If you don't want me to run your mouth about your business, then you pay your own bills. Yeah. And once you start... Once I start paying your bills for you, then now I got an opinion. I have a right to my opinion about you and your business. So I disagree with what he said. He's absolutely wrong about it. But for him to be able to say it, all these people, and a lot of it's our Republicans, and a lot of people on the right started screaming, at, how can he say that? How can he say that? Or He doesn't have a right to say that. He does have a right to say it. Because if, if Israel wants to say, okay, we won't take any more money, then, then once again, it's kind of like what I said earlier, you have the right to shut the hell up. Yeah. If, if, if you're not paying my bills, then you can shut up. But if you're paying my bills, you got a right. You have a right to your opinion about what I say or do. Well, and I, I think that um, we and we. I mean, we could have an hour long discussion on the uh, right or wrong of, of backing Israel this way, that way, or the other. Yeah. The thing right now that frustrates me the most is the amount of money that we are shoveling into Ukraine. And we are literally being told we have no choice but to give money to Ukraine. Um, yeah, we do have a choice. Uh, we can stop it. We, we've thrown billions of dollars in cash at them, billions of dollars in, in, I'm sure, in military hardware. I'm sure some other nations have contributed something. Uh, but, again, we go back to the discussion about providing defense for the world. We are supplying the lion's share of the cash. We are supplying the lion's share of the support, uh, foreign support, for the war in Ukraine. What are we getting out of this? Do we do we really think do we really think that we're going to you know somehow there's going to be some sort of magical change in Russia, and some sort of regime change in Russia as a result of us continuing to throw money at Zelensky the way we are? Well, I will say though, I I, I do I do think that it's important for the U.S. to help support the uh, the Ukrainian cause because we don't want Ukraine to fall to Russia, but but. I have a different take on the way we should do it. Okay, mm-hmm. first off, we shouldn't give anybody anything. We should sell Russia or, or U- Ukraine munitions. We shouldn't give them cash. I don't think we give anybody cash. No. If you need, if you need something, you tell us and we'll sell it to you. We'll put it on a long term note. You can make easy payments and we'll yeah. send Guido to break your knees if you yeah, don't pay. Put you on the Sears payment plan. But, but Ten dollars a month for the rest yeah, of your uh, life. Yeah, but whatever it is, we shouldn't give it away. We, we should we should sell it and we should never give them cash. Yeah. We should give them goods. Yeah. We, 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 we buy this stuff and supply it to you. Okay. So I'm not against us helping Ukraine, but if you do it that way, then what you do is you're not giving them cash that they can spend willy-nilly. You, you can, we're only helping you with bullets and rockets and whatever else it is, and we're going to help you fight your, your war over there. I, it's, a very deep, it's a very deep topic, and there's a lot of layers yeah, to it. There is. But I do, I do agree with you. Us just throwing cash over there is I, ridiculous. It's, it's, it's insane. And what bothers me, and this goes back to what I said earlier, this goes back to the same point I had earlier. Yeah. When I hear about people say, well, Europe is, Europe is paying a percentage. In it. Okay, I don't care about percentages. Why, is the US, why does the United States have to pay more just because we're a bigger country, because we have a bigger tax base? That's, that's stupid. That's, you're still taking cash out of that American taxpayers are paying – and d- redistributing it to somewhere else. Well, why is it? Why is it we're on the hook for more because we make because we have more money? That's stupid. Part of part, I think part of what's at work here. And y'all tell me if you agree or disagree with me. Part of what's at work here is is this attitude of, well, we're the United States of America. and We've got it so easy, and we make we have so much money, and we have so much freedom. We have so much this, so much that, and and we should feel guilty somehow yeah. because we have yeah. so much. 
I don't feel guilty about anything I've earned, anything I've I've amassed in, in my lifetime. But Barack did it for you. Uh, no, <laughs> nobody did a damn thing for well, me. And let's be fair. Period. We 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 are all lucky and blessed that we were born in this country. Amen, bro. And, and, but but we were. So 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 what are you supposed to do? I mean, honestly, if you feel so guilty about being American, move somewhere else. Yeah, leave. I, I'm fine with you. I'm fine with you leaving. Or accept that you were born in this country mm-hmm. and be grateful for what you have, but it doesn't mean you have to give everything away. Yeah, right. well, that doesn't like, mean hey, things are perfect either. I mean, no, you absolutely know, not. And, well, you're not gonna you're not gonna find things perfect anywhere. Um, and and um, all these every time one of these celebrities runs their mouth about you know, Trump gets reelected, I'm leaving the country. No, you're not. I'd love to see that happen. You, I love for one of them to actually do it, and you, they never. Really ever they're do. not going anywhere. Okay, yeah. this is your golden goose, and you know it, and you ain't giving up your golden goose. Yeah. Nobody's well, gonna well, do that. Yeah. Well, let me let me have a. Jeez. Throw out a thought on on the, the amount of money we spend. Yeah, we spend too much. We spend more than we should. However, I think though we should probably go a little a little over what we want, what we should spend. If it, by if you did it by uh, proportion, about either land mass or or because really that's what it is, right? I mean, we we have a certain amount of land to. to well, it's also protect. the economy. Our economy. Well, yeah, yeah, but that, but our economy shouldn't determine how. I mean, that determines how much we c- can spend. Well, you're talking about on our on our defense, right? Okay, okay. yeah, right, I, I right, right. Yes. right. If we're defending our country, yes. if 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 you want to get down to it, it's just about our land mass, yeah. what we have to protect. Okay, so we, and we're kind of disjointed you know, or uh, disconnected a little bit from Hawaii and from Alaska, and of course we got Puerto Rico and we got a few other territories, but but on the whole, those are small overall. But we want to have a little extra influence on others. So I think that us um, protecting, I think we've committed to NATO. That's, that's mm-hmm. of course, uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Trump was asking the question, well, why why do we pay all this? Yeah. Why, uh, this NATO, how much, you know, what, yeah. shouldn't we pay a little less? And I agree with that. Yeah. They, they ought to have a little skin in the game, the other uh, countries. Oh, but I think, it, too, totally. I, I don't have any problem with, what you're saying about how well if somebody's paying your bill, they might want to be grateful. Yeah, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't be totally quiet. I mean, you should have some input, but but realize that the, the vast majority of what you're being protected against is provided by us. That's right, and uh, us, us. <laughs> yeah, and and, and and our taxpayer. It goes back yeah. to it's our taxpayers right. that are and, working every day and help pr- protecting right. your country. And, right, yeah. and so so I think I'm I have if I'm explaining this well enough here, I I don't mind increasing that margin of error or whatever or that safety margin to to invest in a little more, uh, in a little further away. I don't have any inherent problem with that, but as much as we're covering, that is a whole nother question yeah. yeah i mean what what does that and, and those numbers it must be nato because there are other countries that are um that are no, spending more than that no, that this are is, friendly the, this was the top 10 well, uh, but, yeah, say, I, but what about saudi arabia i, I no, they're I just, higher they're higher yeah no i don't right. this was just the oh, top, I, see. I, I, was, oh, I see i was talking oh, about I, european i got you i was okay. talking about you said that's number one number six number okay. seven. Yeah. I, I didn't see that no okay. no cool. this, this was this was i was specifically talking about european countries because frankly saudi arabia i don't hear people say saudi arabia is a better place to live than the united states uh, you said, you know, yeah, well, well, some it, might. Yeah, but <laughs> most people don't. What I'm saying is that's that's what I was going off of right. in China. Yeah. I don't hear people say China's a better place to live yeah. in the United States. I mean, oh. what, what I'm talking about is all these idiots uh, that compare us to the European countries and how great it is to be a European nation. By the way, move. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're welcome to if you right. if you don't like it here, then right. you're welcome to move. But, but my or, point, or though, try to change things. Yeah, but my point is, I don't mind us spending a little more than what we proportionally should be, but I think it's too much of the whole well, thing I, right well, now. 39%. China's number two, and I think China's about 6%. If I remember correctly, well, there. Yeah, well, so, I had that up you, here. If you yeah. pull it up, you can pull it up and see. Because I was speaking specifically to uh, to England or to European countries. Right. But if I'm correct, I believe China's. It, it might be higher than that, but it's less. Maybe less than 10 percent of the world's. Oh, there it was. Is, is uh, defense spend is. Just spent by China and China's right. number China two. is number two at two hundred ninety-two um, billion. Billion. So right. so yeah. There's so we're, we're at eight seventy-seven. Yeah. Right. So we're so at quarter so where ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, Russia's uh, as, as they're way down at at eighty-six point four billion. Yeah. So, well, and where wow. where China the, the the perceived threat from the Chinese toward us, uh, I think for for many years has been the sheer number of troops that they have. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, their their standing army yeah. uh, is much larger in number than ours yeah. is. Right. But you got to understand though too, we have an all volunteer force here. Yeah. You, you if you, you got to compete in, if, it with the civilian market. If yeah. you're in the military, it's because you have voluntarily chosen to join the military. We don't draft China anymore. Is not. <laughs> No. China on the other and hand. And Russia, I would imagine, too. I'm sure it's, I'm sure yeah. it's conscript, conscripted. It, it but, is conscripted. But, well, like I said, but my point on this, Terry, we don't protect China. Right. Necessarily. No, 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 them. absolutely and so not. That, no. that was my, or Russia. Or Russia. So, yeah, right. this is, this, these are countries that we directly protect. Right, that benefit mm. from our, well, other countries that, that benefit, are, but in Europe specifically, yeah. that, that they're, they're the most wealthy after us we have, overall. Yes. We so, have yeah, the most yeah. strange relationship with China. We consider them militarily an adversary. We consider them militarily an enemy. But yet we do billions of dollars in commerce with them, hundreds of billions of dollars in commerce with them. Sure. Yeah. We, we, we are, they are, they're our largest uh, trade partner, if you want to use that word. Well, I think Canada's number one. Is Canada number yeah. one? Okay. Well, then. Which China, makes sense because it's right there. Well, China number two then. Yeah. We're, but we literally are sending billions of dollars every year to China for goods that and a lot of it's electronics you know i mean every piece of electronics within reach of us here the chinese have yeah. some hand in but, manufacturing some component of it believe it or not these were actually made in australia i know that, that's why yeah, i love yeah. <laughs> at least it's not china i'll just i'll, just, I'll, I'll give them a little plug here yeah. these are road my road yeah their Mike's. equipment is manufactured in country. That's why it has Australia. a little bit of a weird accent to it. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you're talking to it. Yeah, yeah awesome. we're talking and sound like this on the other end, it's going out like, good day, mate. Yeah. <laughs> if we talk about barbecue, I'd say Bobby. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we no, and that's an American thing anyway. But no, we, we use road equipment and they they are made in Australia. And yeah. and I and I think they've they've made a huge commitment to keeping that manufacturing domestic there. Yeah. We could do the same thing here in and America. Then, yeah, and we sure talk we all the time about Make it in America, you know, making America great again, you know, ma manufacturing more products here. And I think if, if any lesson should have been learned from the pandemic, it's how volatile the supply chains are when you have to depend on literally thousands of goods being imported into your country and suddenly that supply chain gets cut off, even temporarily. And look at the, look at the, the destruction that it wreaked on the economy. I mean, we literally... We train wrecked a world economy by shutting everything down the way we did. Maybe it was deliberate, maybe it wasn't, but we train wrecked a world economy. We absolutely did. And we created supply chain issues that we're still dealing with four years later. Well, then here's the thing. You could argue and say, well, things would cost more if they were built here. That's true. But our whole economy would be higher because yeah. you would cost more, but you would have more Americans with high paying jobs. Yep. Right. In the end, it, there would be a little bit of a transition time, but in right. the end, it yeah. would actually work well, itself out. Right, and and that's that's and and I've obviously even Apple has has started to figure out sort of how to transition away t to some extent. But you know what's interesting yeah. is that they've had a little bit of challenge. They tried to first go to India, so they've got iPhones being manufactured in India, yeah. but they ran into some logistical problems. So they that's it's there's a there's a certain motivation for workers in China because they, I mean they literally thousands of people show up at these manufacturing plants sure. at Foxconn and I forget the others, but anyway, they these are the big guys, but they show up hundreds if not thousands of people show up every day for a job hoping yeah. that they get hired and yeah. not all of them do most of them don't and then they come back the next day and the next day and so but in india they sure they they probably have a similar you know, as far as the uh, number of people that need a job competitive nature but, of it. but i don't think they're in many cases they're they haven't been doing it in a while so this is uh -huh. a new thing a new startup for apple within that area yeah. so they've had some logistical problems and so then but that would be one step and then the next step is hopefully uh, uh start doing more here but you know still we well, we don't they're saying here in mexico mexico is, is starting mexico, to become yeah. kind of the new production thing if tvs we, yes if, um, cars if we could go in and get rid of the cartels Mexico would be a great production partner for us right. uh, because it is less expensive to live in Mexico. Let's just right. be fair. Mm -hmm. and, but but we also want to make sure people are being paid. It's not slave labor. Right. But the nice thing about Mexico, it's right here. Mm -hmm. right. We don't have to worry about it overseas. We don't have to worry about, you know, it's, it's, it's a government that we can have a little bit of influence on. And I don't mean control influence. I mean work with. Hey, right. this is good for you and partner, it's good for us. Literally Part a true no. partnership. A true, a true partnership. Yes. But, but, yes. They, but they already have that close to the borders that that's not considered – the, near the Texas and California and the other borders, there's 
there's commerce happening oh, yeah. and, and they're protected and you're relatively safe down there. Now you get in deep into Mexico. <laughs> that's a whole different. Um, no, but the cartels are everywhere though. That's well, the they are. It's, well, they and, are. And, but, and, the, and the government is corrupted by the but cartels. The, and there may yeah. be some cooperation to keep, to, to, to keep that business right. flowing. So right. but, that's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap <laughs> it up here. This is get it right. Texoma with the trio. Mike Hendren. Terry McAdams, Trey Sorala, we thank you for being here with us. It is brought to you in part by Lolly and Pop Sweet Shop, lpsweet.com, the website. Be sure and check us out. Uh, Eddie Hills Fun Cycles, 401 North Scott, downtown Wichita Falls since 1966. EddieHillsFunCycles.com. And we're coming to you live from the Mac Tech Solutions podcast studios. Mac Tech Solutions at 4020 Ray Road, Suite 3B, Wichita Falls, Texas. And get them online at MacTech-Solutions. And they have air tags oh. in stock. Well, oh, yes, we do. And uh, and I wanted to say is we need to bring in a, 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 an, an, a, an anonymous treat or something that you we, and, and we, let us is, try it that out. That is coming next week. Oh. That will be here That will be here next week during uh, recording. Needs to be here Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We'll we'll make it happen for you. Yes, we will. Anyway, until next time, guys, take care. We'll see you down the road.